I'm Joy and this is Sarah. We're going to teach you how to do a preschool assessment. Sarah, how old are you? Three. The perfect age for the assessment. The very first thing you want to do before you ring over your preschooler is you want to get your assessment kit and get all of your materials on the table. So take your little kit out and of course put all the materials on the table ready for you. You'll have your blue pen, your marker, your scissors, your manipulatives, your flashcards, and possibly, if you want, a couple of uh, name cards, her progress report, a line with a, uh, a paper with a line on it, and of course, your handy dandy assessment clip clipboard. So, what we're going to do first, Sarah, is we're going to find out how high you can count. You can tell that I'm actually skipping preschool assessment number one altogether when she's here because that is strictly observation only, so we're going to skip that for now. So let's go ahead and go to preschool assessment number two, which is not counting, just joking. You get to play with our manipulatives. So let's pull them out. What you're going to want to do is put them all on the table, but not in front of her so she can touch them. We'll just put them on the side here. And then one at a time, we're going to try to find which things we need to do. So first, we'll get out two of our counting bears. Oh, hold on, we're not gonna play with them. Sit down on your bottom. We're gonna get two, the biggest and the smallest, and we're gonna ask Sarah, Sarah, which one is the biggest? Perfect, which one is the smallest? Excellent, as she knew both sizes, that would be in for mastered. Next, what we're going to do is our understands the one-to-one -one correspondence. So we're gonna get out three different red blocks. We're gonna give her three red bears, and we're gonna say, Sarah, can you put a red bear on top of a red block? This one, bear on Good. This one. Yep, can you put a bear on each of the blocks now? This one, bear on that one. Perfect. So what she's doing is, of course, one-to-one -one correspondence. And as she was able to successfully complete that as well, that would be an M for mastered. Very good, Sarah. Next, we're going to do creating an AB pattern. So with our patterning, Sarah, what we have is we're going to do a blue, red, blue, red pattern. I'm going to start and you will finish it. Are you ready? Okay, sit on your bottom. Okay, first we're gonna go blue, then we're gonna go red. Blue, red. What comes next? Uh, I can't remember. Okay, let's do it again. Blue, red. Blue, red. What color comes next? Blue. Blue. Can you put blue on there? Yes. Perfect. Because she was a little bit confused, I'm going to go ahead and put a D for developing. Where's that one goes? What do you think that color should be? Yeah. Well, that is the only one I have in my hand, so we'll put those aside for now. Okay, next we're going to be doing our categorizing by color. So we're going to give her a couple different bears of all different colors. And with these, we're going to say, Sarah, can you put our bears into families by color? Can you put all the yellow bears together, all the red bears together? Very good. Good. Go ahead and put them into their families by color. Put them into different piles for each color. Sarah, let's put all of our yellows into a pile and put all of your different bears into a different color. Good. Oh, I see that you're doing blue right now. Very nice. How about our next color? Good. Very nice. I suppose time to have <laughs> Very good, Sarah. And what is our last color that you're going to do? Green. Excellent. As you can see, she started sorting by size. So what we're going to do is probably a D for developing on that one. Very good job. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is categorizing by shape. So what we're going to do is put these all together. And we're going to say, Sarah, can we please find, and I'm going to get our pattern blocks for this. Okay, are we ready, Sarah? Yes. Great. Okay, 
sit on our bottoms. We're using our pattern blocks. Sarah, can you put all of the triangles in a pile? Where's all of our triangles? Very good. Sarah, where are all of our... Oh, go ahead and put your triangles in a pile first. Good. Sarah, where are all of our squares? Can you put those in a pile, please? please. All of our squares. Mm-hmm. Sarah, can you put all of our, ooh, and we don't have the octagons here today, but those would have been a good one. Excellent. So, as you can see, she was able to do her triangles and her squares. Probably another good thing to do for categorizing by shape would actually be the same color of different items. For instance, if you had manipulatives that were farm animals and they were all red, but you had a cow, a horse, and a pig, but they were all the same color, and you said put all the horses together, put all the cows together. That would be an excellent categorizing by shape. So with that one, we would go ahead and put an M for mastered. Sarah, our next thing we're going to be doing is categorizing by size. Do you remember our little bear friends? I'm going to shake them up, and I'm going to put them on the table. Can you stand them up from biggest to smallest? Okay. That's kind of like a medium size, isn't it? It's a medium one. Medium, very good. This one is smaller. Oh, very good. Okay, which one is biggest? Good. And how about medium? And smallest? Very good, Sarah. Very nice. I go do it. I go put it in. You did a great job. So what we might do there is we might also give her a couple of the same and say, Sarah, can you please put all the big ones together? The biggest ones in a pile. Can you do that for me? Please. All the biggest. Which ones are the very, very biggest? And we're going to put those in a pile. Okay? Go ahead. Put all the biggest into a big pile. Here's our big pile. Put the biggest in a big pile. Good. Any more biggest? Thank you. Go for it. Okay, now, can you put all of the smallest into a small pile? This one. That'd probably be medium. Remember that medium size? That's good. Let's do a medium pile. Very nice. What do you think? It's medium. Medium. Very good. And then, mm -hmm. now we'll do a small pile. The smallest of all into a different pile. Or two ones. Or two. Two baby ones. So that would be an M for mastered as well. Very good, Sarah. Those are the daddies. Those are the daddies. Very nice. As I was scoring her, I'd want to make sure that I put the correct with our blue pen as I'm doing each single one. I'll do that later, though, while I'm on the video. Now, guess what we get to do? We get to do counting. Are we ready? Look at me. We're going to count as high as we can, all right? Ready? Begin. Start with one. One, two, three, one. Mm, let's start over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. Eleven, twelve. That's okay. So because she didn't progress beyond 11 or 12, which I prompted her at 11, I would actually put 10 because that's where she successfully got. If she went beyond like 12, 13, 14, I'd go ahead and put that number instead. Oh, sit on our bottom. So we would also want to find where that number scored in our developmental continuum rubric because it actually does spell out if she counts this high, what that would be. Oh, I'm doing Next, guess what we did get to do? Sarah, how old are you? She's three. She knows her age, so that would be an M for mastered. Sarah, oh, I just said it. Let's see if we can find it, though. Can you please find your name? Excellent. Let's try again. Now, where's your name? Very good. And what is your name? Oh, that's your letter. What's your name? I'm Joy. Your Sarah. Sarah. So she knows her name. That'd be M for mastered. And she also can recognize it on print, which is very good. 
Okay, what is your last name? Hmm, this is a little bit trickier one for our threes. Sarah, is it Sarah? Do you know your last name? Smart. Ah, okay, we'll probably put still sparked on that one. S for sparked. Okay. Summer. <laughs> Summer, maybe that's her last name. Okay, that one's done. Now guess what we get to do? Our flashcards. This one is so fun. They love to do these because we never pull out flashcards, of course, because they're not really developmentally appropriate. But in sometimes when we're doing our assessing, where we don't have them the full day, it's a little bit tricky for us to just observe their knowledge of shapes, colors, letters, and numbers. So every now and then we do have to see what they know with a quick little assessment. Oh. Sarah, what color? Uh, black. Very good. What color? I don't know. You know that color. Purple. Very good. Red. Yellow. Green. Right. Excellent. So what I would do is I would circle the colors that she successfully named right here. And then looking at our developmental continuum rubric, I would find out whether that was E, S, D, or M. In her case, that would be an M. Oh, guess what I have next? You're a little squishy there. I have a few shapes for you. I'm going to now take out only the shapes that we need to test on because there are duplicates in here. So now, Sarah... What shape? Sickle. Excellent. Sometimes to cue them, I will draw the shape with my finger. That's excellent. What shape? Um, square. Yes, very good. Okay. What shape? Uh, oh. Excellent. What shape? Article. Try again. Triangle. Triangle. What shape? Rectangle. Rectangle. Very good. That would also be an M for mastered. Moving on, now we're going to do, so again, you'd want to go ahead and circle all the ones that she knew and score her appropriately. Next, Sarah, what are these? Uh, numbers. So, Sarah already got that. That's our number three. Sometimes I that's like to start. Name. That's your number. Sometimes I do like to start with a three or four because they usually know that one very quickly. Sarah, that's our number three. What comes, what number? Five. Oh, you know that one. Five. We're going to put that one somewhere else. Really didn't mean to say that. Which number? Two. Four. Oh. What number? Oh. Okay, so we put that one aside because she didn't know it. What I. number? That's not the letter I. This is the number... One. Very good. Six. Seven. Eight. Mm, what number? Nine. The number? Seven. Six. Good try. Eight. Very good. This is the number? Eight. Ten. Good try. So what I'll do is the ones that she didn't know, I'll set those into a different pile. Then I'll take the ones that she did know, and I'll go ahead and circle those again and score appropriately. Next, we're going to do our fabulous Sarah. What is it? Letters. So, what letter is this? Z. Good try. What letter? I can't know. Looks like these haven't been mixed up. We're going to do a quick little mix. Because if we do these in order, it gets the kids a little bit confused. So if you find that they're not mixed correctly, go ahead and just do a quick mix while the kids are there. They'll think you're doing something really cool. Oh, oh, Sarah. Whoa, they are upside down. Good job with that. Are we ready? Okay, what letter? E. That is E. I am going to put it in the, the pile because she did say that the very first time with the other letter. So we'll try again. What letter? K. Good job. O. P. This is our letter? I. Good. This fly. I know, the silly fly. He likes us. What letter? P. <laughs> Silly fly, what letter? As you can see, kids are very easily distracted. What letter? I. Uh, X. B. C. E. This is our letter? F. Good try, that's H. This is our letter? F. L, good try. P. S. That's my name. I know, what letter? You. You. For you. What letter? Emma. 
What letter? Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> oh, Daddy is recording this. Good try, though. This is our letter W. Yeah. That is E, and she success successfully got it on that try, so we'll go ahead and count that one. How about this one? V. C. H. Good try, that's G. Very good. L. What is this letter? L. J. M. Yes. T. Very good. I. This is our letter? I. T. Good try. E. Z. Good try. So again, we have two different piles. The pile that we want to use is this pile, of course, and we'll score her and circle all the ones that she does know. Now let's say that we were doing flashcards and it looked a little bit more like this with the child. What letter? E. A. F. G. H. E. If the child was doing this where they didn't really know their letters, here's how we would do it instead. We would not go through the whole alphabet. We might pull out a couple such as O or X or Z or A, the easy ones. And if they can't still name those, then we're going to go strictly to our finding game. So what we would do first is we would pull out a couple like this, probably three or four. And actually, I think I would like to line them up. And I will say, let's go ahead and do four. And I'll say, Sarah. Can you point to G? Let's see. Can you find G and point to it? Look at the letters and find G. Good try. Sarah, can you point to the letter U? Okay, so she's still not being very successful with having four and trying to find them. So now what we'll do is we'll just do two letters at a time. Those are actually a little bit tricky because they're very similar. Sarah, can you please find the letter J? Very good. So now she's been successful with that lower, with one of the lowest skills. So you'll want to look on your assessment rubric to be able to find out how to score her appropriately on that. And with that, let me double check that we have done all of ours. Oh yes, next we are going to do writing skills. So we'll take her progress report. And with the progress report, we want to make sure that first we write her name on it. So we'll put Sarah right here. And the only thing we'll do on the progress report for this assessment is we'll have her write her name. Everything else will be used at the very end of the year to record this for the parents. Okay, Sarah, here is your marker. Wait for just a second. I want you to write your name right here. And actually, I'm going to put this marker on the table and let her pick it up herself. So Sarah, can you take your marker? and I'll watch how she grasps her marker. And I'll probably even scoot down just a little bit for her to be more successful with that. Can you write your name right here, please? Good, and your A, and your R, and A, and H. Very nice. The very first time, especially our threes, her handwriting might resemble this. So with this, you're going to go ahead and match it to all of this rubric right above it to find out where that fits. And you know what's funny? It fits right in the sparked category. Not quite resembling actual letter forms yet, but she's attempting. So that would be S for sparked. And also when I was noticing how she was writing, she had her hand about like this on the marker. So that one would actually be probably, I'd probably say, an S to S plus, okay? She definitely f has it in the crepe grass, but she doesn't necessarily feel confident with it yet. <gasps> Sarah, guess what we get to do next? What? So if a kiddo's getting a little fidgety, remind them they have something exciting to come up, like you get to cut with scissors. Are you ready? So we're going to take our scissors and our paper that we've already previously drawn a line on, and we're gonna watch how she holds the scissors, especially, not just how she cuts the line. Sarah, can you please, and just put them on the table, can you please cut this line for me? Go ahead. This. That's correct. Oh, where's our line? There we go. Go ahead and cut that line for me. As you can see, she's having a little bit of a struggle with it, so you can help her. Let's not get too upset. There we go. Good. Go ahead and 
and start over here with your line. Okay. We don't need to correct them too much. We're just trying to see how they do this. Very nice. And can you keep cutting to come up to the line? That's not too comfortable, is it? Do you want to turn your hand a little bit? Now let's try. Still a little bit tricky. Her fine motor skills looks like we're going to start working on those a little bit more. Okay, there you go. Let's try that. You might even want to hold the paper just a little bit if that seems to help them. Very nice, Sarah. Thank you. You did a great job. There you go up. That's okay. We'll work on that a little bit more. So, now that the assessment is over, what could we do to say good job? Uh, good job. Can we give you a high five? Yeah! Wait, did you have Nice job. Sarah, I, I, say see you later. See you later. Goodbye. <laughs>to join our preschool all-stars it's my exclusive membership community where you'll get mentorship from me with weekly q a lives support and guidance and friendship from hundreds of women on the exact same journey as you starting running and growing their preschools and my exclusive access to preschool university every training and done for you file that you'll need for every milestone on your journey to help you start run and grow your preschool we've all been there and we've got the exact same steps that you need to go through but we do it all very quickly so that you don't have to waste time or money doing the wrong things at the wrong time we'd love for you to join our preschool all-stars membership just go to preschoolallstars.com or click the link in the description to immediately jump into preschool all-stars again go to preschool allstars.com and we'll see you there.